Hey guys, it's Todd and Courtney from Raw Public and today in this video we thought we would do a little bit of a talk about a new show that has started in Australia. It's on Channel 10, it's called Everyday Health TV and whenever we see a new TV show come up that is talking about health we get excited but we also get a little bit sort of worried about whether or not it's going to be um, really talking about the important stuff and so yeah, let's check it out and see what it's all about. And Casey, you're out there talking to a lot of people. Yeah, well we have a lot to say when it comes to our health, but we're definitely not talking about it enough and we're not talking about it in a really practical way. Yeah. I think that's a great point. I see too many people once they've got pain or once they've got a symptom and we need to have these conversations before those things happen. Okay, cool. So they're saying that it's better to be proactive instead of reactive and we can agree to this. Definitely. Well, I really want to ask, how much sugar do you think you're having in your diets? Oh, oh. Back on the sugar train again. Too much, evidently. I actually counted how much sugar I had in my breakfast this morning. I had untoasted muesli, yogurt and mixed berries, and I'd already exceeded the five to six teaspoons that the World Health Organization recommends that we have in a whole day, and I haven't even hit the biggie tin yet. Okay, so they're talking about breakfast here, and they're talking about the sugars in their breakfast, like the granola, the yogurt and the berries. They didn't kind of differentiate between the berries and the other, like, sugars in the food which could be coming from the um, muesli. It could also be coming from the dairy yogurt. Um, but the thing that surprises me is that they didn't touch on the dairy yet. Um, it's so easy to substitute dairy yogurt with coconut yogurt or even switch it out and switch it for almond milk or rice milk. And you don't have the cholesterol and you don't have the mucus forming dairy fish oil. It's been promising us a healthier heart for years and the research stacks up. Does it? Actually it does, but not in their favour. Recent studies have shown that supplementing omega-3s is not associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality, cardiac death, sudden death, myocardial infarction or stroke based on relative and absolute measures of association. So what about people that have already had heart attacks? Wouldn't it be beneficial for them to eat fish and um, get omegas from fish? Well, that's what you think and that's what they want you to believe, but check it out. Here's another study that shows that the meta-analysis showed insufficient evidence of a secondary preventative effect of omega-3 fatty acid supplements against overall cardiovascular events among patients with a history of cardiovascular disease. So. Whether you haven't had it, whether you have had it, it doesn't matter. Fish oil and fish in general is not going to help with your heart health. So this is uh, not a good start for this segment. See, I'm here to tell you a bit of bad news in that most of the population are not having the recommended weekly allowance of oily fish, just two to three serves. Really? Yeah, I mean, do you eat that amount of fish? No way. Well, neither do I. I tend to supplement, OK? What's so good about fish? OK, this thing about fish is it's rich in omega-3, OK? And we actually don't produce omega-3 naturally in the body, so we have to consume it, OK? And it's so fantastic because it's good for our brain health, uh, it's good for our joint health, our heart, and natural anti-inflammatory. We must, must eat it. <laughs> if you're not converted by now and already running out the door to the local fish shop, then supplementation is another way to get omega-3s into your diet. And for the vegetarians out there, flaxseed oil is a great source of omega-3s too. Okay, so it's good that they pointed out one vegetarian and vegan option, which is uh, flaxseed oil. But they didn't mention chia seeds, walnuts, dark leafy green vegetables, and hemp seeds, which are also other great vegetarian and vegan sources of omega-3s. Also, I don't generally think that flaxseed oil is the best source of omega-3 um, it's very easy for flaxseed oil to go rancid especially if it's been sitting on shelves in health food shops and supermarkets for a really long time it's better to get flax seeds and grind them up yourself at home sprinkle them on your cereal or put them in your smoothie yeah and now these are all short chain omega-3s they're the ALA and our body actually takes those short chains and turns them into long chain omega-3s, which is your EPA and your DHA. Now, everyone just assumes that we're eating the fish because we need to, because the fish are producing these, um, these long chain uh, EPA and DHA um, omegas that we have to intake, but it's actually from the algae that the fish eat. So why not just take the fish out of the loop completely and just eat the algae if you really feel like you need to supplement your omega-3s. And you can. They're making um, algae um, supplements which are 
omega-3 rich so that you can take that supplement and avoid having to eat fish and taking fish out of the sea because we know that we are starting to um, see dead zones in the ocean from all the overfishing. Yeah, and that's not to mention the other pollutants and mercury and all the other things that are coming from fish that we're actually getting out in our so-called fresh waters. So there's a whole bunch of reasons there. A, not to eat fish, and B, if you really need to supplement your omegas, then go straight to the source, not the fish in the middle. I'm starting to feel like Blackmores has a pretty big say in the content on this show. Yeah, me too. Um, it's very obvious that Blackmores has a massive sponsorship with um, Everyday Health TV, and it makes me wonder, is this actually about health promotion or is this about money and profits? Exactly. And just to give you guys an example of that, as you can see from this article, the company is on course to post an annual profit of well in excess of $100 million for the full year. So it's really hard to kind of sit back and take this uh, health advice as, you know, the truth when it seems to just be peppered with all these adverts and clearly more about profit than health. We lift the lid on the big issues affecting our lives, including one of the big killers in bowel cancer. It's great to have join us in the studio, our regular pharmacist from Terry White Chemist, Dean Toneman. Thank you so much. Now you've actually bought in a home bowel cancer test kit. What do we do about informing people to kind of go through this once they're over 50? It's education and it's making it accessible to people. So. Um, so anyone can test if they want to, and it's certainly not a bad idea. We do focus particularly on the 50 plus and people with a family history. Okay, so another important topic, bowel cancer. I really don't see how um, a pharmacist is probably the best person to talk to about preventative care when it comes to bowel cancer. Um, and I think it's just weird that they have this test that when you're 50 years of age, why not have it at like 40 or 30 or 20? It seems really odd. And there's that, this talk of reducing red meat and cutting out smoking. Why not just cut out red meat and animal products altogether as they're clearly the cause and one of the main causes at least of bowel cancer? Smoking is, is, is one thing, which yeah. weird that you wouldn't think it'd affect your bowel, but it can. Um, diet, so fatty foods um, and, and eating poorly, I suppose. Um, red meat intake has got a huge yeah. impact. So for those who are eating a lot more red meat or, or those sources of protein, it often means that they're doing it at the less of um, eating more plant-based diets. Mm. So they kind of have this imbalance of what they're eating. So they briefly touch on um, how diet and smoking can be linked to bowel cancer. And one of them actually says that eating a plant-based diet and reducing red meat can be a good thing, but no one's actually saying stop eating the animal products. As you can see from this graph, intestinal cancer also correlates with animal food consumption. So the more calories that are coming from animal food sources, the higher the prevalence of intestinal cancer per 100,000 per year. Even research has shown that one third of the more than 572,000 cancer deaths that occur in the US each year can be attributed to diet and physical activity, including being overweight, being obese, while another one third is caused by exposure to tobacco products, so i.e. smoking. So it's basically like saying that smoking is just as bad as eating animal products and eating uh, you know, processed foods and things as far as getting bowel cancer goes, which is, which is just crazy. And so they don't even elaborate on this and, and go break it down even further, as they probably should, being that this is all about everyday health, right? Exactly. Thanks so much, Dean Tottenham. Our regular farmers from Terry White Chemist. What's your recovery process been like? Cause it can be almost like a full-time job. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm used to training about 30 to 40 hours a week. Um, so I want to ask for our viewers, who some of them will have different injuries, but what are the top tips for recovering from injury generally that you could give us? Um, definitely sleep. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. And what about diet, uh, protein, mm -hmm. fluids, water? Definitely nutrition is a huge part. I personally follow a little bit more of a paleo type diet, um, lo low or no carbs, just like pretty much no refined sugars, mm -hmm. um, lots of protein um, and healthy fats as well. Yeah. Okay, we totally agree that nutrition is key when it comes to recovery. But what is with this no-carb, low-carb, paleo sort of nonsense again? It's ridiculous. This whole low-carb thing has been debunked several times. Um, and for someone who's exercising 30 to 40 hours a week 
and not getting any carbs in, which is your body's main fuel source. I mean, no wonder she's burning out and copping heaps of injuries. It's just insane. Yeah. And they did a study where they had healthy young uh, crossfitters, actually. So it was high-intensity exercise. They put them on a paleo diet for a certain period of time. And over this period of time, their HDL cholesterol, which is your good cholesterol, went down. And their LDL cholesterol, which is the bad stuff, went up. So there is research to suggest that paleo diets are associated with unfavorable changes to blood lipids. So we aren't going to really go into depth with why paleo diets are um, so detrimental to people's health because there's so much we could say about that. That's for a whole nother video. A great one is mayonnaise. So the low fat variety has three times more sugar than the full fat. So I always so go full fat. It tastes better. Well, yeah, I mean, the science is starting to back that up. That, you know, some of these fats aren't as bad as we once thought. They help with satiety and all sorts of other things. So let's stop demonising all the fats. Oh, so we're in the kitchen with the sugar guy and he's pushing the full fat mayo as opposed to the low fat just because it has less sugar. And sure, we are all for getting rid of the refined processed sugars from a diet. That's important. But not in place of animal fats, cholesterol, your dairy, your eggs, you know, all these things are extremely detrimental to our health, as we've just talked about in the previous section. If you go to their Instagram, you can see this guy is another paleo pusher, so he's all about the eggs and the meat, which we've already discussed is so bad for our health. And why not promote something like a cashew-based mayonnaise? It doesn't have the cholesterol, it doesn't have the saturated fat, and it doesn't have the dairy, and your body knows what to do with it. And it tastes damn good. Yeah. And it's all about the marketing, as you say. It sure is. And you know what? I think this whole show is really just a whole load of poo. So thanks for watching and listening to us, guys. If you would like to see more from us, please subscribe. If you want to share this video around, that would be amazing. And give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And as always, don't forget to keep eating those plants not the paleo stuff, stay hydrated, and of course, love, love yourself. yourself. Peace, guys. Bye.